Before I make my decision to either go south or to the east, I want to talk about something that I made a mistake on. When I drew this room here with the fountain in it, I truncated the room because I was on the edge of the map. I called this a corridor because it was narrow, but that was a mistake because I rolled for a room. And on page 41 of the rule book, it says that this, even though it's now narrow because I had to truncate it, it still counts as a room or corridor as per the random room roll, and you still roll for its content, even if it's only one square in size. So when I check this, called it a corridor, I should have called it a room and rolled accordingly. With that said, I think I'm going to head to the east and see what we find. 55. 55, we have a corridor with a door, so I have to choose how I want to rotate this. I think I have an idea of how I want to already. We have our corridor. Now we need to roll for the contents. Nine. The dreaded nine, which means we're empty. So we'll go ahead and roll and see what we have. We're going to search. Get a four. That's going to knock it down to a three, which means it's still empty. We've searched this corridor. Do we want to go through the door or do we want to head north? Not a lot of room here. We have plenty of room here and another corridor headed that way, so we'll go through the door. 33. 33 is going to give us a small, tight little corridor with another door leading out, though. Let's roll for the contents. Our group's not finding a lot lately. Four. Four if a corridor empty. Well, let's give it a look. We don't accept empty corridors. Well, that's going to be a wandering monster. I don't think we can go down to zero. What kind of wandering monster are we going to deal with? A one? That's going to be vermin. So, what kind of vermin are we going to deal with? Three. Well, this will be a first for this adventure. We got 2d6 Goblin Swarmlings. Level 3, Treasure minus 1, Morale minus 1, but our Dwarf gets to attack at a plus 1. Let's see, we have Reactions Flee, 2 to 3, Flee if outnumbered, 4, Bribe, 5 or 6, Fight. Well, we have a lot of chances here to do something non-violent. That'll give us another success on the way to fulfilling our quest. So let's roll to see how many there are, and then we'll do a reaction. 2d6. So there's only four of them in this little space. Let's go ahead and roll. We're looking for anything but a five or a six. Let's see how they react. Oh, and we got a five, of course, which means they are going to fight, and they get to attack first. Maybe we'll get lucky and they'll just flee once they get down to below half. Well, below half means they only have one left. Because this is a wandering monster, so there's no treasure. We are in a corridor, and the wizard was up front, followed by the dwarf. So each of those will take an attack. Our wizard has no bonuses for his defense, so he needs at least a four, because these are level three creatures, so he can defend. No luck, he will take a wound. And the wizard is now down to three life. And our dwarf tries to fend off one of these little goblin swarmlings. He gets plus two for his heavy armor, so as long as he rolls anything but a one, which is an automatic failure. He succeeds, no problem there. And our dwarf, remember, is now level two, so he's going to get a plus two because he's not using a ranged weapon. And his Warhammer gives him a plus one, so two for the level, one for the Warhammer itself, and one because of this creature, so plus four. Well, that's just miserable. Anything else would have been nice, but that equals only a five, so he only managed to take out one.
I think the dwarf is still upset about losing his barbarian friend, so his combat game is off. Next our wizard can attack. He has nothing that's going to give him a bonus here because we're not going to use a spell on these things. His wizard staff attacks at a negative one. Oh, but he got a six. That explodes. We can roll again. And an 11. Minus one is a 10. That's enough to take out the two that are in front now. Unlike the dwarf, the wizard was able to channel his anger into his combat and take out two. There's only one left. This one goblin swarmling will check its morale at minus one. Well, a three would have been fleeing anyway, so a two definitely does also. We don't want to backtrack, so we're going to go through the door here to the west. Hopefully we can find something better than swarmlings. We got a 32. 32 is going to give us a corridor with multiple exits. Well, this actually kind of fits in here pretty good. All right, let's get it drawn. That fit nicely. All right, let's roll and see what the contents of this corridor is. An eight, and of course it says, if it's a corridor, it is empty. All right, let's go ahead and give it a roll. Search this corridor. Well, we're going to have another wandering monster. We're really good at attracting monsters to empty areas. And on the wandering monster tables, that's going to be a minion. Let's roll on the minion. A two. Well, we had the swarmlings. Now we're going to get the goblins. D6 plus three. Level three. No treasure because they're wandering. Goblins have a 1 in 6 chance of gaining surprise, thus acting before the party. If they do act before the party, roll on the reactions table below. Dwarves attack goblins at plus 1. So let's see our reactions. We have 1, flee if outnumbered, 2 to 3, bribe, 4, 5, 6, fight. Well, here's another chance for us. Let's see how many there are. D6 plus 3. Ooh, there's 9 of them. They're really filling up that corridor. Let's see if they act before the party. They have a one in six, so if they roll a one, which they do not. So now we have to decide, do we want to check on their reactions table? I think so. They're definitely not outnumbered. They flee if outnumbered. They're not, so that would be an automatic fight. So one is fight, two and three is bribe, four, five, and six is fight. I'm still gonna take the chance and hope to roll a two or a three. No luck. They're fighting and they get to go first and our wizard and dwarf are up front. Wizard has nothing as far as defense and these goblins are level three. Oh, success. Nice job by the wizard. Now the dwarf with his heavy armor only needs to roll anything but a one and succeeds. This is tight quarters fighting, two on two. Hopefully we can take out five of them pretty quick here, and then maybe they'll just run away because we're not getting any treasure from them. The dwarf will go first. Remember our dwarf is plus one versus goblins. And he has an attack of plus one with the war hammer and a level, so plus four again. Hopefully he rolls better than a one. This time he did, so that's a nine. That's easily enough to take out the two in the front. The dwarf got his focus back, bashes the two goblins right in the front. Two more step forward and the wizard takes aim. The wizard doesn't have a ton of modifiers, so he's just hoping for a good roll. That is not good. He misses. Now the goblins will attack. One each again. The wizard needs a four or better. Does not succeed. We'll take a wound and is down to two life, so we gotta be careful here. The dwarf def again, anything but a one. Oh, and he takes a wound and is down to four. We do have that potion of healing that the rogue is carrying. We may have to use it, but we also have bandages available with every character. So we're not totally in trouble yet, but if this goes poorly again in another combat round here, we may have to 
use a spell to try and get us out of this trouble. But the dwarf will now attack. Again, he has a plus four. Perfect. He's going to take out two. I figured these goblins would start to hesitate. The dwarf is just smashing them as they step forward. Hopefully the wizard can take out one, and then the goblins will check morale. All right, wizard, what do you got? Good roll. Not bad. Five minus one is four. That will take one out. And the goblins will test their morale. Three or less, and they flee. Yes, they stick around and fight. Not exactly the result we were hoping for, but thanks to the wizard taking one out, we only have four left. The wizard defends. That is successful. Very nice. And then the dwarf. Also successful. Now we can turn the tables and attack the dwarf trying to smash two goblins. Easily does so. I don't need to re-roll because we can only take out two. And we'll go ahead and roll for the wizard. Two more goblins remaining. The wizard raises his wizard staff and is successful. Yeah, four minus one is three. Really nice. Looks like we're managing to fight our way out of this trouble. The dwarf smashed two and the wizard even brained one of them with his staff, leaving one left to fight. I will have the remaining goblin attack the dwarf and he succeeded easily and the dwarf will swing, get a five, doesn't matter, there was only one left. Our group of three, well, really a group of two, the rogue just stood in the back and watched, have managed to take out our sixth group of minions. All right, hopefully if we run into another creature, it will be something that will give us some treasure. And we'll head to the east towards the interior middle part of the dungeon. Hopefully we can get a room that connects well. 22. I think that'll fit in there just nicely. Yeah, this will fit in there just like a nice little puzzle piece. Let's roll for contents. This time we're rolling as a room. First time in a while. And a six. And unfortunately, that is just vermin. Ugh. Four. We're getting all the creepy crawlers now. D6, giant centipedes. Level three, no treasure, great. Any character wounded by a giant centipede must save versus level two poison or lose an additional life. Reactions one, flee, two to three, flee if outnumbered. Four, five, six, fight. Well, let's see if they're outnumbered. D6, they are not outnumbered. Well, that's not good, only a one would be a non-violent action that's not bad for us. So we have four giant centipedes and we're gonna rush in and attack first. We'll hold off on using the rogue because he can add his level to his attack if there are less minions than party. We'll have the dwarf go first. He's gonna get plus two because of his level and plus one for his war hammer. Five plus three is eight. That's a good start. They are level three, so three and then six with two remaining. So he took out half of them already. One more and we'll have to test their morale. Now we'll go ahead and let the rogue go because the party does outnumber the minions. He can add his level, which will take that negative one for using as a dagger off. So he's fighting at an even modifier. Oh, and he missed leaving the cleanup work to the wizard, who is rolling at a negative one. That's enough, they're only level three. That leaves us with one giant centipede. Let's check its morale. Oh, it's gonna stick around and fight. Even though the wizard took one out, the last one is not scared, and we will have the dwarf face off with it. The dwarf has plus two to his defense, so we know anything but a one or a two. Oh, and he takes a wound. That takes him down to three life. And now he has to do a level two save versus poison, which means anything but a one. Let's change dice. Oh, 
Oh, and he takes a poison wound. Wow. Down to two life. That giant centipede is fierce. The dwarf is enraged. Raises his warhammer up over his head. And just goes crazy. That would be a total of 11. That last centipede is destroyed. A little bit of housekeeping here. I had the rogue give the dwarf his potion of healing. The dwarf drank it, took himself back up to max life. That's what the potion of healing does. I put a note here that I used a potion because a character can only use one potion per adventure. And then the wizard, you can kind of see where I erased it, applied his bandage. He was at two life, the bandage, Brought him up to three. I put a note here also for bandage because a character can only apply one bandage per adventure. I didn't do anything for the rogue. He's at three life, but his max is only four. Having defeated the giant centipedes, we're ready to move on. I'm going to head through this corridor to the east. We got to find something that we can have a nonviolent encounter with, hopefully. Through that corridor, we will find 26. A tiny, tiny little corridor. What is in this tiny little room? Five. Empty, but we get to roll on the special feature table, which is a D6. Four. Oh, that's a new one. Cursed Altar. As you enter the room, an eerie glow emanates from a sinister altar. A random character is cursed and now has minus one on his defense rolls. To break the curse, the character must either slay a boss monster alone or enter a blessed temple, C2 above. Oh, there it is. Or have a blessing spell cast on himself by a cleric. Who is going to have minus one on their defense rolls? Who will be cursed? We'll use our marching order as it currently is with wizard, dwarf, rogue. Roll a six-sided, one and two wizard, three and four dwarf, five and six rogue. The wizard is cursed. Not a good situation. Let's get out of this room and head out of here further into the dungeon. Beyond that door, we have a pretty tight space. Let's see what we get. We have a 34. Now that's definitely not going to fit in that space, depending on which end we decide to come in how much of it will be there. All right, let's give it a look. Well, this is gonna dead end us here. Let's go ahead and draw it in. Again, like I said before, this should have been a room, so when we roll on the contents, we'll treat it as a room. What do we have inside this truncated room? We have five. Empty, roll on the special feature table. Great. Well, maybe we'll get lucky and get a blessed temple right here. And no, it is a cursed altar. That is rough. Two cursed altars in a row. Ouch. Well, let's use our same order. Wizard one, two, dwarf three, four, rogue five, six. It's the wizard again. I don't know if I can be double cursed. I haven't had that come up before. Let me look. I scanned through the rule book and I couldn't find anything. I may have overlooked it, but I didn't see anything that specifically mentioned multiple curses. On the cursed altar text, it doesn't specifically talk about multiple curses. I don't think they would stack on top of each other. I don't think you would be at a negative two now. I think once you're cursed, you're cursed. It's kind of like being turned to stone. You can't like be double turned to stone and have to be blessed twice to be returned to flesh partway and then again to really be returned to flesh. So. I'm going to go with the curses don't stack on top of each other. So actually that was a good roll. The wizard took the brunt of it again and still remains cursed. If anyone has any thoughts on that, please let me know in the comments below. So we're going to have to backtrack through this cursed altar room and then into the giant centipede room. Now when we re-enter this room, do we have to roll on the cursed altar again? It says when you enter the room. So I'm assuming I have to do it again. It's just my bad luck that I have to backtrack through a cursed room again. So we'll go through here, 
roll a dice to see if we have a wandering monster, and then we'll roll to see who is cursed. Because that is a special feature of the room, it doesn't appear to be like a trap, like the curse just goes away after it's inflicted on somebody. So first, do we have a wandering monster? We do not. And the curse, this time is on the dwarf. So the dwarf and the wizard are cursed. And now we continue to back track into the room where the giant centipedes were. Has anything wandered into this room since we left? No. Now we can go through that door to the south. And on the other side of that door is a 26. Again, our tiny little corridor. Small rooms have not been nice to us. Let's see what's in there. Inside our corridor here, we have a 10. It says, if a corridor, empty. I'm going to leave it alone and move on through the next door. 53. I don't think that's going to fit there very well, but we'll go ahead and put what we can. This is going to be a tiny, tiny little room. 53 was a corridor, so that's what it'll be for our contents roll. All right, what's in the smallest room we found so far? A four, if a corridor, empty. Again, I'm choosing to leave it alone. I'm already gonna have to backtrack quite a bit. So we're gonna have to backtrack one, two, three, and then we'll go out that door there, so. Let's do three rolls to see if we run into anything along the way. All right, in the first one, nothing. Next, oh, we ran into a wandering monster in a room where the giant centipedes were. And our wandering monster on the table is a four, so that is minions. Number four. We're really going through the monster charts in this dungeon. Now we're going to see orcs, d6 plus 1. Level 4, treasure normal, but they're a wandering monster, so unlucky for us, no treasure. Orcs are afraid of magic and must test morale each time one or more is killed by a spell. If a spell causes their number to drop below 50%, they test morale at minus 1. They never have magic items in their treasure. Treat any rolled magic as d6 times d6 gold instead. We don't have any elves in the party. The reactions, 1 to 2 bribe, 3 to 5 fight, 6 fight to the death. Well, let's see how many of these orcs attack. We have d6 plus 1, and there are 4 orcs. The orcs are wandering monsters, so they get to attack. Each character will take 1 attack, and the dwarf will take the additional. Let's start with the dwarf. Plus 2 for his heavy armor, minus 1 for his curse. So he does not defend against the first one. And fails again, taking him down two wounds to five life. The wizard gets attacked, minus one for his curse. Takes a wound and is down to two. And the rogue gets to add his level on to his defense, plus his light armor. So he's at a plus two. And he succeeds in defending himself. Now we can go on the offensive. I'll have the dwarf go first, plus two by adding his level, plus one for his attack. So he's at a plus three. Oh, absolutely terrible. Only a four. It's enough to take one out. The dwarf is definitely not going to be the MVP of this group. He really chokes in some tough situations. We really need some work here from the rogue and the wizard. The rogue can add his level, but it's canceled out by his light hand weapon. Well, that three means he missed. He needed a four. Orcs are level four. And the wizard? I don't want to use a spell yet. So he attacks at a minus one. Gets a six. Nice. We can roll again. That's a nine minus one. Eight. He manages to take out two with his wizard staff. The dwarf might need to take combat lessons from the wizard. We're down to one, so let's check the morale for the remaining orc. And he sticks around. He will attack the dwarf. The dwarf is at a plus one and he automatically fails and takes another wound and is down to four life. Good thing we had that 
potion of healing or the dwarf would have been long dead. I'll have the dwarf attack. Add a plus three. Again, not a very good roll, but it's enough to take out the final one. The orcs have been defeated, and that was our seventh minion. We're closing in on ten, but we still have to backtrack one more room. Whew, got a lot going on. A lot of action. And another wandering monster. Oh my goodness. All right, here we go. And it's going to be on the weird monsters table. And if we can defeat a weird monster, we get one XP roll. We rolled a two. We're going to have to deal with an iron eater. Level three, four life, three attacks, no treasure. Oh, he's wandering monster anyway, no treasure. Defense rolls against the iron eater do not enjoy bonus from heavy armor. Shield and light armor do count. If the monster hits, the character takes no damage, but loses his armor, shield, main weapon, or 3d6 gold pieces in this order. Reactions flee, 2-3, to three, bribe, 4-5-6, fight. So we got a 50-50 shot at doing something non-violent. Unfortunately, this is a wandering monster. This is a corridor, so the Iron Eater is going to come from the rear and attack the dwarf or the rogue. The dwarf will be one, two, three, and it's the rogue. The rogue has light armor. He can add his level to his defense roll, so he's going to get a plus two. The Iron Eater is a level three creature. Oh my goodness, this is just depressing. Well, he's not going to take damage, but he will lose his armor. But that was just the first attack. It gets three attacks. The second attack will be on the rogue again, who has no armor and is just wearing his clothes at this point. He gets to add one to his defense roll. Oh boy. It says in the order of armor, shield, main weapon. So the rogue does not have a shield, so his dagger is now gone. And the third attack is on the rogue again. And this time he succeeds into self. I couldn't find anything in the book that talked about fighting with your hands. It might be in there again. I didn't spend more than a few minutes leafing through the book, seeing if I could find anything. If anybody knows of it, please leave some comments. Our characters can now attack this Iron Eater who has four life and is a level three. The rogue isn't going to do us much good. We're in a corridor, so only the dwarf and the rogue can fight. Backing out of here won't do us any good. We have to go through here. Fleeing, it would get a free attack on us. So let's go ahead and fight. The dwarf will attack. Plus two for his level, plus one for the warhammer. We need a good roll here, dwarf. Oh, what is going on? I think I'm going to retire these dice when I'm done. Oh, this is brutal. That's only one wound. The Iron Eater takes a wound. I think we're going to have to use a spell to get ourselves out of this trouble. The Iron Eater is a level 3. Our wizard is level 3. He can add his level when attacking with spells. I'm going to go ahead and use the sleep spell just to take this thing out. I'll roll just for the sake of rolling. 3 plus 3 is 6. That's definitely enough to put this thing to sleep. Well, we get to do an XP roll right away, and we put the Iron Eater to sleep. So that's another tick on our quest. Another non-violent resolution. So that is two. We only need one more. Who do I want to attempt the XP roll with? The Dwarf or the Wizard? I don't want to attempt it with the Rogue. It doesn't even have a weapon right now. I'm going to attempt it with the Dwarf, so we need higher than a 2. And we got a 3. Barely made it, but the Dwarf levels up. Our Dwarf is now level 3. Max life of 8, current of 5. Now he gets to add his level to his attack roll, so now we're much more formidable against all types of creatures. We finally made it to where we need to be, and now we can exit through this door to the west.